Hi, this is Shadi. When it comes to self-defense against weapons such as clubs and knives, I think it's safe to say that the military route will always be the best. So anything in the Japanese world such as kendo, ju kendo and tan kendo will be great in my opinion. It will teach that reflex and also you have like Filipino martial arts that will work. So a lot of us live in places where there is a lot of law and there is a lot of order. But trust me, there are a lot of places where lawlessness absolutely rules. And you have fights with machetes and places where the cops and you know law enforcement are just absolutely terrified. You see, there is this video. I will link it in the description below where you can actually watch the machete fight unfold. and. People actually ambush each other, they actually close distance, and then they start to grapple, much like the uh, military footage that you just uh, saw. So, I think it's safe to say that, you know, depending on where you live, of course, learning something military in this particular context is very important. Here you see the man who was holding the machete was eventually outgrappled. So, uh, I'm sure you've seen the Gracie Jiu Jitsu, uh, Instagram posts where they show that, you know, a guy with a bat or a club, he was out grappled. So if you don't know how to use something and someone knows how to use anything, they will actually beat you. So, you know, as they say, the sword in the hand of the coward is useless. So let's take a look at some of these arts today. Now, uh, Ju Kendo is actually based on, you know, French fencing and also Japanese uh, spearmanship. So uh, you can see here the ancient way of doing it. Now here with the bayonet, uh, this is Baptiste Tavernier, which is a martial arts researcher and a veteran in both Ju Kendo and Tan Kendo. You see here the very fast and lightning uh, thrusts, and also you can actually grip and uh, thrust so you are grappling also at the same time so ju kendo and the tan kendo are, are essentially the same art this is the bayonet so in uh, tan kendo you're actually holding it without uh, the rifle while in ju kendo you're holding the rifle with it so it's uh, there is far more a range of motion you can grapple you can hold with the other arm you have one arm that's free and you can strike the head Kind of like Kendo, you can grapple. Here you see Batiste himself do it. Now, when it comes to uh, reflex and what you can learn from them, uh, let's listen to Batiste himself. Uh, now that I want to ask you about self-defense and uh, you said reaction and uh, reflex, um, you've trained you've trained Tan Kendo for how long? Uh, I would. Uh... I don't remember, but I would say maybe 15 years, something like okay. that. Okay. And Jukendo, mm -hmm. same? Around yeah, the same. same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've done a lot of randori by, by now, and you have a lot of reflex. You developed a lot mm -hmm. of reflex. So I've seen you on the NHK um, footage, which I will post at the beginning of the clip, which I posted at the beginning of the clip. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were catching the arm, stabbing. You were blocking and stabbing. You were, mm -hmm. you were dodging. And then doing a, a tsuki and mm. uh, what to you like you've seen I'm sure you've seen a lot of knife fights or duels or uh, epe or epe or French fencing. Mm -hmm. What do you to you what do you think the best system? And if you think that Tan Kendo is one of like top five maybe uh, to you what is the best knife system or dueling system or weapon system? You mean uh, for attacking or for defending? Attack and defense. Okay, because I mean, as a knight system for attacking, purely attacking, and like, or, you know, attacking or defend yourself with a knife, but uh, by defense, I mean, you're gonna stab the guy to defend yourself. Tankendo is pretty good um, mm. because it fights from a, um, a stance where the, the knife is in front of you not you know held at the back so it's it can be very quick super fast uh, and you have um, many different techniques um so it's good now as a defense thing it's really hard um 
like if you think about empty hand defense against knife i don't know but i mean i've seen a lot of stuff i mean uh, of course uh, i've seen aikido and uh, tanto dori and you in judo you have a few goshin jutsu kata i guess against the knife um in you old you know called you in Luha, uh, like takenu chidu and other stuff there's a lot of you know short sword or knife mm. against empty hand techniques but mm. um all those techniques even in aikido or in judo they are like generally they have a very very limited um the attack is always always the same it's very you know yes limited case of application like oh if this attack happens then you can do a shihonage or whatever but there is no thing for if the guy does something completely different then mm. of course it's still a, it's a base for training and maybe you can train your own but it's always very very limited and so in japan i don't really know a system which is based on defense like mm. purely based on defending against weapons with empty hands uh i don't know um i've seen interesting stuff in the philippines you know like eskrima kali and on video uh I, I don't practice myself so when you look at some video you say oh this is kind of interesting and cool but you it's really hard to judge anything on the based on the video anyway so but yeah judging from a video yeah. kali es eskrima they seem to have very cool stuff actually yeah. um but then i don't know you know I, I've never practiced system. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. I, I mostly don't know anything actually, so it's hard to tell. But from what I know, in the Japanese system, um, there are there are a lot of stuffs, but the application is always very limited. So I don't know. Yeah. If you think knife against knife, tankendo is pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of very fast stuff and mm -hmm. very direct attack direct thrust uh mm. but it's not really for defending it's mostly mm. attacking and mm. you know you, you all the techniques are not made to injure or hurt someone they are made for like one kill one 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 first one kill type of techniques so mm. um you couldn't you know you can't use that uh in a lawful country i would say <laughs> yes but um i've seen you the grip the elbow grab the arm and then you can attack so uh, it it develops a lot of reaction and that's very important because when it comes to knife a lot of people just take it out very quickly so in that sense i think for defense i'm not talking about just the attack it can really help in detecting the danger or the uh, trajectory the knife um, also, Tankendo, maybe because you know you have that really long weapon and it's just ah, coming Jukendo, at you. Yeah, yeah. Jukendo, mm -hmm. um, and you said also you broke fingers in Tankendo, or yeah, it happens. But um, how does it? How, how did that happen? Well, for example, if you do, um, if you do um, a Shi'ai, if you do a, a, you know a fight, a match against Kendo. So they have a really long sword and sometimes you try to block them and you try to grab them because they have a lot of momentum forward because they mostly strike going forward with a, mm. a lot of power uh, if your block is not efficient as enough sometime and you try to grab because of the momentum they're just gonna snap your fingers back wow uh, happens a few times so it's not broken it's just you know the ligament takes or the joints take a, a hit um also broken bones happened a few times like maybe two a couple times uh, when you study kata with beginners and their reaction time is too slow or something and they try to to do a halai or like a, a hit on your on your sword on your tanken and they're too slow and they hit you on the on the thumb or Wow. And when it's with solid wood, it tends to break the bone a bit. But um, ah, in the kata, you don't wear the the kote. No, no, no. Kata is wow. just like Ouch. that. Yeah. Yeah. But it happens mostly with beginners. It's but uh, yeah, it does happen. <laughs> uh, honestly, in tankendo, the, the the most usual thing is broken ribs. 
because even if you have the um, the bogu, the the armor, the, the protective gears, um, the hit to the um, to the mm. ribs can be very very sharp and heavy, mm. and sometimes the protection doesn't stop it, and mm. you, you break a few ribs. But then again, it's nothing very serious, like uh, compared to I don't know judo. I have very very serious injuries. Karate to uh, tankendo, jukendo stuff happens because it's martial arts but it's nothing very very dangerous i think if i had to guess anything that's like fencing uh jukendo tankendo kendo they're the best when it comes to dealing with weapons because of their um shiai and uh, the way they hit so quickly and sometimes like i've seen the stuff uh, in olympic fencing or even in kendo like they just suddenly go in and they both disengage and you don't know who scored. You see the referees raise the flag, but you don't know who scored. Then you see it in slow motion and then you see all these things happen. So um, this this is the only thing that will prepare you for something as serious as a knife attack or uh, someone with a bat or anything that's long and trying to strike you. Um, I think I think it will give you... Oh, yeah. No, I think it will give you yeah, a better reaction time because the attack happens with the weapon in front of you. And so from this to this, um, you know, attack time for Jukendo, I don't think they ever measured it for Tankendo, but it would be more or less the same. The, the, the time span for a Jukendo attack is about uh, 0.3 seconds. Wow. From from start to finish, so it's very quick. If you compare, for example, with a tanto dori in Aikido, where the opponent starts from here and does a big step in and attack, the attack time will be maybe I don't know 0 0.8 or one second. So you can see attack happens maybe three times faster. So it gives you more. Yeah, mm. you're you're more nimble, I would say. Mm. And and you have, they have a different. Uh, um, uh, striking zones. They have here. They have here. They have here. I don't know. Do, uh, do you in Tankendo, you can strike everywhere uh, on the torso and uh, the throat, and then you can do some like a slash or hit attack on the head and on the arms. Uh, nothing like on a, the leg. Yeah. Like the nothing cocaine. on the leg, obviously, because the weapon is too short. It wouldn't make much sense. But uh, yeah. So if there's a, a wide. Um, Area for yeah for hitting the the hand and the head. It's like kendo. You strike like this or slash. Yeah, it's a more. It's like a kendo. It's not a ski. Uh, no, no, it's a it's a hit. Um, bayonets, like you know, for the militaries, uh, Japanese militaries bayonets back in the World War Two. They were not very. I mean, the cutting edge wasn't very good. It's a very dull weapon because it's a mass produced weapon. And, you know, bayonets, I guess, they, you can sometimes use it to dig a trench or as a tool. And so it doesn't cut very well. Uh, so stabbing is number one technique, but you can hit. But when you hit, it's not exactly like you want to like, cut something. It's more like you want to break a bone. Mm. You know, it's not it's not a katana or you're going to slash the uh, mm. The guys for so can you arm. score a pawn with it? Yeah, yeah, you can score a pawn, but it would be more like you know, it's it wouldn't be a deep cut. It would be more like you break the bone or you. Okay. You have a slight. It cuts too, but it's not like a katana. You know, you're not cutting through and through. So. Uh, 